I have to ask this question because it's part of our early history. Shakespeare, Stratford, 1953, Alec Guinness, Douglas Campbell, Michael uh, Bates. English, English accents. Yes. Here's a whole bunch of Canadian lads and lasses with Ontario accents, Alberta accents. All kinds of accents. Yes. How were those accents put together? Because after a while, uh, people seem to think that you had to do Shakespeare with some sort of English accent, that the Canadian accent or the Ontario accent wasn't good enough. Was that tension there, or how did Guthrie deal with it? Well, he, uh, generally speaking, he didn't. He seemed to approve, or he did approve, of quite a lot. They, they weren't bad speaking, you know. There was a lot of very good speaking. These people are not totally un incapable. I mean, Eleanor Stewart was a voice teacher, and a very yeah. good one. And uh, she had taught a lot of these people. Uh, and uh, I, well, you weren't conscious of the fact that they were talking like that at all. You know, it wasn't as... Everybody was making some effort to sort of modify their local accents. <coughs> but Guthrie encouraged the pronunciation of words like glass rather than glass, which is English, glass. Glass. He glass. said glass, as we see it now. It's a yeah. glass, it's not a glass, it's a glass. So uh, the natural parts of speech that suited, he didn't make any attempt. The only kind of thing he would be awful about would be, you know, uh, uh, do instead of do. And what about the hard R's? I have to ask that to water, water. Well, I think that is, I still find a major problem is getting uh, er, no or northern uh, people of, even English people, of a fragment of the letter R. And R is a very, it's a letter R that they're afraid of. So that you say mirror, because you won't say mirror. Re, re, re. But mirror. that's the R in the middle of mirror. What about the R at the end of mirror? Mirror. And you soften the R, mirror. Yeah, right, because you, yeah mirror. mirror. But you it's didn't still say mirror. There. No, don't say mirror. Mirror. Oh, no, don't say mirror. You, the mirror. translating the I into an E sound is because of the fear of the R's that are coming up. Oh. Mirror. Mirror. What about war? War. Again, it's just laziness. Instead. You're half and half the war. War. You, put, you don't go war. No, a war. War. Yes, I'm saying war. war. But I'm not saying war. Well, if I were Scots, I'd say, it's a war. War would be Scots. And Irish is war. And Irish is, is war. 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 That's us. That's war. Our, that's they Ontario. cut off the R. The Irish cut off the R, but so. Uh, war. They're, they're lazy about the R. But they do have an R that we have in yeah, yeah, well, it's, it's like, the, it's, a, it's a, a kind, kind of funny R. Right, you know, it's, it's in the back of the teeth there somewhere, you know, right back here. Yeah. All that sort of thing. You learn, if you really know what the phonetic language is, you read it and see uh, how do you make that sound. Then you find out, it gives you the placement in the mouth to make it, so you understand something of the character of the people. But phonetics doesn't tell you where to put the sound. You, well, no, but if you try to make the sound, like a, a phonetic sign will say, this is pronounced O-E, like oi, oi. Oi. I suppose oi. I can do that in the middle of my mouth, oi. Right. But if it's oi, but oi, 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 oi. Now, what does that do to me as a character if I make him sound like that? He changed the nature of who I am a bit, you know? Well, even though I might be a kind of person that uh, is um, uh, quite forthright, but and it gives me a character, though, that it, has a distinction that's not quite as forthright as if I'm talking like that, which opens up the face a bit more, where the sound of something can change the idea of how the face is placed because you change the face of the shape of the mouth. And out of that, character can grow. It's the resistance to using the sounds. Imitation is not a bad thing in the theatre. That's the point. Imitate and then learn to make it your own. But if you don't imitate, you're not going to be able to present it. Yeah. What so about an American accent? Do you have an well, American accent? Well, I can. Accent? I, I, American accent, uh, I'm not very good in, at real... Uh, if you put me down in the south, I can get down there, all right, I suppose. I can do some of these passable as that. But if I... In, uh, 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 or if I'm, um, in Are the, you doing that by ear or phonetics, Douglas? I would do it... I'm doing it by ear at the moment. But I, if... What I think is, if I were really working at something, I would like to write it out phonetically and learn it phonetically. Right. 
So I found out how to get the sound, what it did to my face, what it did to my jaw, what it does to the way I speak. You know, <laughs> what does it do when I'm putting on side of the way, and going up in my head and downward? What does it do to my face? What does it do to the whole general principle of what's going on inside me? Yeah. It's none of it disrelated. It's all related. All these things go together to make it work. But you have to perhaps take them one at a time and then put them together.